down here in a progressive tax system. So that messes people up and it also messes people up that that they have to account for the social security and Medicare, the payroll taxes, not just the federal income taxes, because those are again are taxes that they don't even really see ever because they're pulled out of their wages and you don't even see them on the form 1040. They're totally just, it's just phantom money that was lost when they're a W-2 employee before they even got their paycheck and they're not even really checking it or on the, on the 1040. So if you're a sole proprietorship, you have to take that into consideration. So a lot of people get behind, even though they're a pro profitable business because they don't do their estimated, uh, their estimated payments. And then they, they have a completely, they get behind on their taxes, which kind of messes them up from there. So these are the withholdings. Let's go ahead and say, put some estimated payments in. So I'm just going to just put a random estimated payment payment of let's say 5,000 paid and well, let's bring it up to like 15,000. We also could have rollovers from the prior period. We'll dive into that later, but the, you know, the general idea is that we'd have the estimated payments that are going to roll in as well. So we can see a lot of different, you know, components that, that are happening. Now, on top of that, you also could have other planning uh, components, which are going to be related to business tax returns. So inevitably, if someone has a schedule C business, if they start to do well, at some point, they're going to ask or they're going to talk to someone that talks about whether or not they should they should start an LLC, a pass through entity, a flow through entity, or an S corporation, and you'll get into a bunch of topics about that and people that are lawyers or people that are tax professionals that specialize in the creation of S corporations and LLCs are gonna be quite persuasive to say that they should go this way. I'm not saying that you shouldn't do an LLC or S corporation. I'm just saying that, that uh, you know, there's incentives involved there with the people that, that make money from uh, setting up those kinds of entities. So then the question, so then you're gonna have those uh, kind of questions that could come up and there's also questions with regards to other kinds of deductions that might be applicable when you have your own business, such as uh, the, the if I go to page two of the deductions here, you might be able to deduct, deduct an IRA because you don't have access to a 401k plan anymore, right? So you might be able to deduct like, like an, uh, an IRA deduction, but it's limited. So then in order to be able to deduct more, you could think about other kind of retirement plans. A 401k is usually too complicated for a small business. So possibly a self-employed SEP plan may allow a business to put more money into it and do some more planning, give you a little bit more time to put the money in or simple or other qualified plan. You also could have health insurance issues that's tied to the sole proprietorship and whether or not you can deduct self-employed health insurance. So all these other kind of weird you know, things kind of come up with the sole proprietorship. So it does open up another can of worms. And if you're a, if you're a, a business doing tax preparation, you want to kind of parse out which one of those things you're, you're willing to deal with and where you might say, okay, this is beyond me. I'm going to recommend uh, someone else in these areas, which will cause clients to uh, uh, complain bitterly maybe, but you've got to do what's you know, what's, what you gotta do in order to keep your business plan. Um, business plan, yes. Uh, going, so you've gotta tell clients no sometimes. Let's put this into the, our tax software over here. And we'll say, let's say that we have a schedule C business. And let's, I'm gonna put the income statement in now. We might talk about another worksheet that you might use to like calculate your 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 uh, Schedule C income statement, and then and then maybe any kind of tax versus business deductions later. But I'll just put a basic income statement in here. There's the hundred thousand that's pulling into my income now instead of from a W two from uh, Schedule C, just to mirror what's happening on the tax return. And then I'm gonna have the self-employment tax, which I'm going to say is other taxes. Now I could get into more detail calculating the tax. We might dive into that later, but for now I'm going to let the software do it. I'm going to say, okay, software calculate the tax. It's at 14,129. So 14,129, 142,129. 
14129. That then is pulling over to the first page again. So it's included in the other taxes now, which is other taxes here. And then I could see that on my form 1040 page two, other taxes pulling in here. And then we got half of that, which is deductible on line 10 or schedule one page two right here. I'm gonna mirror that over here. So I should have an above the line deduction, which is up here, which is gonna be an adjustment to income. I'm gonna do a little formula for that. I'm gonna say this is gonna be not alimony. Where, where did I have it? This is gonna be half of self-employment equals the self-employment tax one, other taxes, that 14,129 divided by two. There's the 765. 765. I'm going to pull that into the first page. There it is. So now my AGI is at 92,936. And so that pulls over here just to mirror that 92,936. And then the standard deduction 12,950 is the same. I don't have any itemized right now. So I'm going to take the standard and then the qualified business income deduction. Now we could do another worksheet just to double check this. This is one, of course, you want to dive into and kind of look into a bit to make sure, but I'm going to let the software calculate it for now, just to represent it. Huge amount here, 15,997. So I'm going to say 15,997. That gets us to 63,989. So 63,988. So I'm off by a dollar six that's fine and then i'm going to say page two does the calculation nine thousand uh six ninety two i'll let the software do that nine six nine two so i'm going to plug that here nine six nine two letting the software do that calculation because it's calculating based on the taxable income using the progressive tax tables so it's not just a flat rate this is the average rate which is calculating this divided by this to get the average and then we've got the other taxes, which was the 14,129. That means total taxes, Social Security, Medicare, which is the, which is the payroll equivalent self-employment taxes plus the income tax gets to the 23,821, 23,821. And then we said there were estimated payments of 15,000. So I'm gonna say, here's my estimated payments, but that's a W-2 payment. So I'll just move the W-2 down to the estimated payments. Let's do, I need another area down, down here. I'll say insert and, and, uh, man, let's do this. I'm going to format paint this up here. And I'm going to say, this is estimated tax pay payments, pay my voice cracked payment. Okay. Payment. It's and I'll just say this was 15,000. You might have like four estimates. So you might want like enough room for like four or five lines. I'll make this black and white. I know I'm doing this fast, but I'm just trying to, we're running long on the time. Let's do a spell checky though. Cause your spelling's horrible. Your spelling's horrible. It's ridiculous. Look, I spelled it right. What are you talking about? Let's insert, this is going to be total estimated tax payments summon it up on the outside summon it up and then we'll put that brings it over to the first page so there's our payments gets us to the 8821 and so over here we're on 8954 there's a 133 penalty so i'm going to say 133 I'll just put that penalty 8954, 8954. So I know I did this worksheet quite quickly. We built this worksheet in another uh, section when we were looking at individual income taxes. So if you haven't seen it built, it might look a little bit overwhelming, but the idea is here that we can do a double input into a system like this, double checking our numbers and also kind of seeing where things go a little wrong and we can, we can dive into them a little bit more so hopefully it, it helps us to kind of double check things and solve data input errors or or find data input errors as well as look at those areas where we, where we should uh 
get a little bit more understanding of what's happening. 